Hey guys and welcome back to Pixel Cherry Ninja's channel. In this video we are having a look at the new re newly released Ambernic RG Arc S. Now I haven't got the one that has a dual operating system. I went for the Linux one because to be honest unless you really really want Android it's the Android version's only got two gig of RAM. Two gig of RAM on Android just I, I don't think it will run much. I mean I'm happy to be proven wrong but it, it didn't appeal to me so I went for the cheapest one. It came with a 16 uh, it's 16 gig micro SD card which had the operating system it had two partitions on it and the other partition had some games on there now um, one good one good thing if you've got another Ambernic device if you've got a second micro SD card in it with your ROMs if you slap that straight in here it will pick it up that's what I did and the game just started working so this unboxing here guys it's a fake unboxing because I'll put it back in the box just to kind of show you guys what's on the what's inside the box at the bottom there you can see the two micro SD slots and a 3.5 uh, a 3.5 uh, in, intake, you know, whatever it's called, uh, a hole to put your 3.5 millimeter headphones in. Uh, the buttons, the D-pad, they feel a little bit cheap, but they're not bad. Like when you're playing them, they're decent. We'll look more into that uh, a little bit later. At the top there, you've got a function key, volume up, down, power, uh, a mini uh, HDMI port. You've got two US, uh, USB Type-C ports. One acts as a charger, and I think the other acts as an OTG on-the-go adapter. And opening it up underneath, you've got they've given you a screen protector and a couple of wipes in there and like a basic manual. But hey, you know what, guys? Who looks at the manual? Um, now, I want to point out that you're going to find a lot of reviews on YouTube regarding this item. Now, what separates my view is I'm doing this from the perspective of someone that likes fighting games, someone that likes Capcom fighting games. And I've not really been able to enjoy them on a handheld because I just hate the shoulder buttons. Six face buttons, they're exactly the same as an arcade stick and that's what I like using. So bear in mind my bias is going to be towards fighting games. There are other videos that will check everything else for you. I might touch on some of that stuff, but honestly, focus is fighting games. Um, now I found an issue with this. So powering this unit on, as you can see, the brightness is brightness is good. It's quite high. And if you want to adjust the brightness, you can hold down the function key at the top, move the volume up and down and it adjusts the brightness. Overall, it works quite well. However, in certain cores, like I found in the final burn Neo core, you can't adjust the, the brightness, the brightness, and it's very, very low. So if you're playing in bed, you're good. If you're taking it outside somewhere and you need a bright screen, it just it doesn't deliver on that and that just kind of sucks uh, so i'm using the vanilla software that's on here now as far as uh, ambernic goes there's a lot of developers uh, a lot of a lot of community developers that are annoyed with them because what ambernic are doing uh, for at least from what i've kind of gathered by going on their discord is they're using open source licenses but they're breaking the conditions of the license which is to reveal your source code if you use someone else's uh, work if you use someone else's uh, open source work and they're not actually doing that so here i am actually using shadow dancer and guys that's the maximum brightness on there you cannot put the brightness up and down the other thing is you can't change settings if you want to change anything you might be able to do it temporarily as soon as you reset and you play another game that's it it's gone you can't save anything on there so there's a custom firmware actually in the works uh, i've got a beta version of it available maybe if i get a chance i'll put that on there and have a look at it i do intend to have a look at it do let me know if you want to see a video uh, of that custom firmware uh, running i'm hoping it gets complete soon it might be out very very soon and hopefully that will bring a whole bunch of our op options just simple stuff like being able to adjust the brightness see as you can see in the actual operating system in the home menu i can adjust it and it can go quite bright like decently bright once i'm playing certain calls it it just goes dark man and i'm trying to play shadow dancer here we'll start with uh, we'll start with a little bit of shadow dancer uh, because shadow dancer is a game that i like to test on emulation devices because there's a lot of emulation devices handhelds that just don't run it well they don't run it at full speed uh, it just runs badly but here you go like i can't i can't get the brightness up and that just sucks man that's why i'm giving it a big thumbs down Okay, as we start this, guys, I just want to say I bought this device with my own money, so all the opinions are my own. I did ask Ambernic for a review, review unit, they just blanked me, so I never got one. So honestly, like, I'm being as honest as I can here. I've got nothing to gain from it. It is just me being me and playing this. So Shadow Dance is a game that I like testing, and it's slow. It's not running at whatever the full frame rate, 59 point whatever, 60 hertz. And if you know this game well, it will feel off. And so it's not a very, very powerful device. It is going to have its limits because this is a game that I often find is 
it's just difficult to emulate for systems that aren't too powerful. The other Ambonic I have, it doesn't work on that. Now, if I had latency, because I like to use the run ahead that's built into um, that's built into RetroArch, I think it works really, really well, and it eliminates a lot of that input lag, but it can't handle it, especially not for Shadow Dance, so maybe for some other stuff. You can see it kind of drops down to 40 frames a second, so it's running 33% slow. You can see it in the graphics there as well. It just it just yeah it just doesn't run that well so but we like it does run stuff well I probably should have started with what runs well then what doesn't run well but i think uh, as we were on shadow dance i was like let's just check out shadow dancer so let's go now let's now look at some stuff that does actually run well on this i've started it weird bad first let's look at it good now when it came to dreamcast emulation see this is what i'm talking about here i was able to get high brightness on the Dreamcast emulation on this. Sorry if the colors look a bit bleeding. That's just, I use an old iPhone 6 for filming and stuff. On the whole, it's okay. But I had this as bright as it would go. And it's bright, especially when we look at um, Shadow Dancer and how low that was without without me being able to actually switch uh, switch the brightness up in it. it anything it was it was it's was terrible it's terrible for that um but yeah cvs2 guys this actually runs really really well and i have to say the d-pad the d the d-pad is good i can do my moves like i can i can do a combo i can cancel it into a level two now don't get me wrong i missed a lot of stuff but i'm not missing it because the d-pad's bad or anything i'm just missing it because hey i mainly play fighting games on an arcade stick i mess around on a d-pad but this is Without a doubt, look guys, I'm, I'm saying this, I've played a lot of handhelds, and if you're if you're a regular on the channel, you know I love handheld gaming. Guys, this is the best, without a doubt, the best D-pad uh, for fighting games, at least on any handheld out there. Like, playing something like Mario World, I prefer like a SNES-style pad, but that's because I mainly played it on the SNES, and I prefer that square, uh, that square kind of design. But when it comes to fighting games, man, this is... This is fantastic. Like CVS2, I'm busting, you know, like uh, crouching short, short, standing short into a fierce dragon. I'm doing like crouching medium kick into super, canceling, canceling that into a level two. And uh, just get, it just works. The stuff just works. And I don't know generally about Dreamcast emulation, um, like the more powerful games, the more 3D games. We'll have a look at uh, Project Project uh, Justice 2, Rival Schools 2, sorry, Project Justice uh, as well, which which I think ran a little bit slow. But as far as this goes, this is one of the main games I want to play on there. And it works. It works really, really well. And the joypad, honestly, the joypad and the six buttons make things easy. Uh, one thing that I was always confused about, I kept subconsciously pressing like the right button to get a move out because i'm so used to years of playing on a handheld like that but guys like here yeah, uh, the dreamcast stuff uh, capcom versus k2 at least what i tried it just works good combos look good on it man next up guys let's have a look at some street fighter 3 third strike so the first thing you're going to notice again it's dim i'm going to say that a lot in here because yeah this what, it's running on final burn final burn neil uh, via RetroArch, and uh, yeah, man, it just it brings stuff out. Then what? What? A, just honestly, what a shame for uh, what a shame for like the OS it comes bundled with. Like it's 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 got great controls. Like honestly, like to do moves on it. Like my moves are coming out. Like if I'm missing stuff, it's because hey, I I'm missing stuff due to my own execution. Like everything is accurate on this pad. Like it just it just works but then they've made it they've made it where the brightness is low again i really can't wait for that um, custom firmware to come out i'm going to try it right after this video so i might do a community post with just a few comments on it if i uh, if i can't do a dedicated video on that beta of the custom firmware but um guys it just works honestly i've never had so much fun playing fighting games on a handheld until an fpj handheld comes out with six face buttons like honestly i would have to say even with its faults there's nothing better than this like if you were on if you're thinking about buying this and you know the stuff like the low brightness is something that annoys you you know it can't run shadow down so i mean it can run third strike and third strike is holding it's holding 60 fp uh, pretty much i mean it feels as good as it does on any emulation now there's there's a tad of latency but i find the latency on linux isn't as bad as the latency on android and that's another reason i went for the linux version without going uh, for the android one but third strike the arcade version runs well if that's uh, if that's a game you like playing also stuff like pressing pressing the two medium punch uh, 
medium punch and medium kick together in order to do a universal overhead that just it just works it just works simply works really really well i i got it much much more times consistently like nine out of ten it really missed and the same goes for throw if you're trying to throw you're trying to tech a throw you play with your thumb now it's a little bit weird because when i play on an arcade stick i play with my fingers uh, as opposed to my thumb so in this one it, 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 it will take me a little bit to get used to because I generally play with my fingers. I might end up putting this like on my leg and tapping it with my fingers because some of the more, more advanced stuff, I've only got my thumb where I need multiple fingers to do certain combos and moves. But on the whole, guys, it's it's good for fighting games, man. I'm going to keep saying it again and again. Like, it was a pleasure doing the moves. It was. It just felt amazing. I wanted to do a little comfort comparison. I wanted to test the D-pad against uh, an original Saturn controller that you're seeing up there. I think that's like the Mark II one because I remember the Mark ones were bad. I don't actually have a Saturn. The only reason I have this is I used to play uh, my Xbox, my original Xbox online using this for a period of time before I moved on to an arcade stick. So, uh, and I'm gonna test it against the 8-bit2 M30 controller. Uh, two controllers that are similar to the controller layout on here. Now I'm only gonna, I'm only comparing it to the face buttons because it's a, the, the six face buttons that we use for fighting games now i have to say when it comes to the d-pad the number one the best feeling d-pad there and the one that has the most premium feel it's actually the saturn one which isn't a surprise uh, but i prefer the ambonic d-pad to the 8-bit doll m30 d-pad now that's just my personal preference on there there's nothing wrong with the 8-bit doll m30 d-pad i think the Am ambonic one's uh, better i tried it I, i'm thinking to myself okay is this really the case yes it's definitely the case and also uh, one thing i find with the m30 is when i'm playing a fighting game remember i mainly play on stick uh, when i try and do like fireballs or i try and do like half a circle sometimes my character i, I, I get wrong inputs out for jumping that didn't happen once to me on the ambonic so as far as the d-pad goes the best d-pad out of the three things you're seeing here saturn first ambonic second eight bit doll third now, in regard to the buttons, now the buttons on the Ambonic, they feel a little bit cheap. By all means, they're not bad buttons. I got used to them. I, I, I was playing them and I was enjoying them. And after a minute or two, or a few seconds of playing, you forget. You don't, you don't really think that they feel cheap or anything. You're just playing because you're having a lot of fun playing with six face buttons. But the buttons, the best buttons out of the free here, Saturn uh, controller without a doubt. Then second will be... Uh, the 8-bit doll M30 buttons. Honestly, I'm really, really trying to get a feel for them. But yeah, that's how I feel. And in third place, it's the Ambonic buttons. But again, they're not bad buttons. They they definitely feel a bit cheaper. But overall, overall, like it, the controls are good. The controls are good. Okay, I know I said uh, I was mainly fighting games, but I did say we will try some other stuff. And hey, this is some of the other stuff, guys. So this is um, California games on the Atari Lynx. And guys. This is my favorite surfing game. I don't, I don't really play surfing games, but I smashed this on the Atari Lynx. And uh, you know what, guys? It's comfortable to play this. And that's what I was checking here. Because of the horizontal design instead of like a vertical one, it just feels nice on the hand. And doing those uh, doubles, and I think I'll get a triple as well at some point, uh, it just feels really, really nice uh, on this device. Now, there is a way you can apply shaders and you can apply screen overlays as well. Everything is, is built into... Uh, the, operating, the operating system, you know, like well, the front end, I guess you could call it, the front end that's available here. Unfortunately, if there's any changes you do make in RetroArch, none of them stick. So if you want to turn shaders off or you want a particular shader, you need to go into the menu, uh, into into the front end's menu and change it. And I think that's that's been the case with a lot of the Ambonic devices. But uh, I know with um, custom firmware, I was able to have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of... Um, a little bit more choice or a little bit more variety of what I could have and, and what I could save. I mean, I actually had a look to see if there was a lacquer available for this. So all I want on this is RetroArch. I'm happy with that. Uh, but there's no one's ported lacquer over to this year. Hopefully that will change in the future. But again, looking forward to that custom firmware so I can do changes within RetroArch and actually just run RetroArch because I'm, I'm used to RetroArch. I'm quite happy running it. But that's, that's the front end. It's not exactly feature heavy, but there is some stuff there. And here we have some Game Boy DMG action. And guys, if you've not tried Samurai Showdown on the DMG, it's it's a it's a very very good fighter on uh, on the game uh, on the device. Sorry, and you can actually link it up and play it two player, and it's a lot of fun. I recommend trying this on your analog pocket if you've got a couple of analog pockets, or if you've got your Game Boys, link them up anyhow you want to pair them. But I wanted to try this because it is a fighting game, and it's on the Game Boy, and it plays comfortably. All the moves come out, no issues. It just works. Unfortunately, when I tried using the shaders that are available, it kind of made it look worse. Like the colors were completely wrong. Even though I'm colorblind, I could tell. Or sometimes like 
like the border of the actual shader would go inside the game area maybe maybe it was made for int uh, intricate scaling as opposed to like uh, you know like the core provided option either way i didn't want to use it but it runs game boy well uh it feels comfortable on there you know even though i i, I like my dmg i like playing stuff on the analog, analog pocket for the game boy this is a good option for it Let's move over to the Game Boy Advance. And, and the reason I wanted to try Game Boy Advance on this is because the, the shape at least a little bit reminds me of the shape of the original Game Boy Advance. Now, yeah, I wanted to turn on the FPS counter because I know sometimes certain emulators struggle with running Game Boy Advance at full speed, but this device seems to be running it. And this is Castle, uh, Castlevania, Area of Sorrow. Uh, my favorite um, my favorite uh, Game Boy Advance um, Castlevania game without a doubt however again the issue with the brightness I just couldn't get it any um, any brighter than this uh, again like I said I'm going to keep saying about the brightness because it does affect a lot of uh, a lot of the games you can currently play on here but it plays well now I did notice a tiny bit of latency but you are going to get that with emulation devices because you know most recently I've been playing this on the analog pocket and it feels super super sharp on the analog pocket it just feels great on the analog pocket but if you don't have an FPGA device uh, and you want to play it on something you can play it on this if you're playing on the analog pocket unless you've got a grip of some kind it's going to cramp your hands man on this one like playing playing on this it's it's a pleasure it feels so good in the hands even though you know the Game Boy Advance didn't have six buttons but you know what it's not difficult using um it's not difficult using a few of the buttons out of it the shoulder buttons are well placed and they're comfortable to use like uh you know when uh, when Sama is doing the dash And you know we had to do it, guys. We we've got to test out the uh, some Mega Drive games, and uh, what a better game to test than actually Streets of Rage 2. And guys, it feels it feels good on this. It's nice to have the three buttons the way we have them on the Mega Drive. You know, A is your special, B is your attack, C is your jump, and it feels like you're playing it exactly on the Mega Drive. And uh, idea again, um, nothing saves in here, so that's annoying. Like I'm doing the video, I've turned on like the frames per second. I try and save it. It gives me a confirmation that it's saved, but it's it's it saves it as a new config, but I can't get access to it now there's probably a way I can look at the files I can look at the retro arch dot config and maybe go over and change it from a read only to uh you know read and write and make some changes on there but I didn't really want to do that because I have got a beta of the custom firmware like I said and I'm going to try it and maybe that's just going to make things easier but guys this is good for playing uh, Mega Drive games on it feels good if you want to play Streets of Rage on this honestly out of the emulation handles I've tried this is definitely the best experience I've had playing Streets of Rage um, you know you've got you've, I've got Windows ones and I've got Steam Deck ones and that handles run ahead better so that will eliminate like a little bit of latency that's that that can be felt here but honestly it really really isn't that bad uh, I can adjust to like lag and latency better than a lot of other people because I've played online it's not something I always like doing but to carry this around and like to take this to work and just mess about with it it is a lot of fun you know especially given the fact that it's got it's going to have a lot of my 8 and 16 bit games that I, I I really really do want to play and on the Mega Drive Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition and yeah again have to turn on the FPS it doesn't remember anything it's got a worse memory than me uh, but I wanted to try it out now guys all the moves are coming out like I, I'm missing moves honestly it's not the d-pad do you know when you're playing stuff sometimes and you feel oh it's the controls that are letting me down on this one I never ever felt that I never felt it was the controls that were letting me down what was letting me down was me and my execution guys it's just it's fun to play i was playing it on this you know yeah my stuff was just coming out it just it just works man it works really really well so it was actually fun to play the mega drive street fighter which by the way is the better version of street fighter when compared to the snes when i was younger i thought the snes version was better but this has cps1 changed the snes one doesn't so this is more accurate to the arcade one see over there when Charlie was doing the fireballs, I was trying to do dragon punches to avoid them. But obviously, that was just my bad execution. Um, just kind of got to rethink how I kind of placed my thumb on the pad. But guys, it works well and Chun kicked my ass. Let's move on to Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. One of my favourite arcade games. So if I had to pick like my two favourite arcade games, 
Uh, let's let's go three because I want to put an SNK game in there as well. But if I had to put three favourite ones that I play most often, it would be Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 3 First Strike, and Garou Mark of the Wolves. Uh, also, I also like playing other games as well, but uh, those are the ones I most commonly play. Uh, I guess somewhat competitively, guys. It just works. I'm, I'm able to do all my moves. Anything anything that I'm missing, I'm missing because I'm missing it. Like I keep saying, it's not the D-pad. It's awesome to play Capcom fighters on. A game that a lot of people use for testing and testing diagonals and uh, you know that down straight one is Contra and uh, so I, I like Contra 3 that's what I'm going to go with Contra 3 on the snares now if you notice there I held down the fire button and I tried to flick jump uh, flick jump with part of my thumb and I ended up hitting the Y button or is it A button activating the bomb uh, sorry the B button on this controller so I, ac I accidentally hit the, uh, the bomb controller and that's why I don't like playing Mario games uh, on this because when I'm holding the button to run or in this case fire and I'm hitting jump I accidentally hit other buttons so however the d-pad test here every direction I pressed came out like when i wanted to lie down straight i lay down straight when i wanted when i wanted to test it and shoot diagonally i shot diagonally like see where i just jumped down there and i crouched down straight away um i, I meant to crouch down and i've had it where you know something like the analog pocket where instead i may get a diagonal out or there's other d-pads out there. i've had some really really bad d-pads over the years um but yeah when i when i'm dying in here guys i'm telling you like i never felt throughout this entire video not once did i feel i died because there was something wrong with a controller I, I died knowing i died because i messed something up or you know it was just me it's me testing stuff out playing it there those diagonals i'm doing there i'm moving it diagonal to move diagonal at no point i can tell you guys at no point did i move it in a direction and it came out in a different direction it just works like you know if you want to play contra on it you can play contra on it it just works really really well i'm like i said mainly going to be using this for fighting games and like some of the arcade games because a lot of the arcade games let's say take something like golden axe which was on a mega drive as well that has like three buttons um so you know magic jump attack you know i'll, I'll use it like that and uh, okay i haven't really looked at uh, snk fighting games because hey you know i've had the four face buttons and i've been um, i've been using i've been playing those and i've been enjoying those somewhat you know i've got some handhelds with better d-pads uh we've got d-pads sorry not better d-pads than this this is the best handheld d-pad for fighting games but i've got some where i can actually play on them and it's got four face buttons but i wanted to see what neo geo stuff ran like and neo geo stuff works fine on this it works fine on the other less powerful amonic i've got so there's no reason it shouldn't but again the issue again is with the brightness man it's just not very bright man which is very very annoying because it's definitely stopping me from enjoying it uh, more than i can enjoy i mean given that i do a lot of my gaming in bed before i go to sleep it will kind of be okay for me but metal slug works fine again no issues here you know holding that top corner uh, and moving left and right while shooting up the, the d-pad's just accurate guys it's an accurate bloody d-pad I wanted to have a look at a Tetris game as well and I wanted to have a look at a Tetris game that I had handy with a hard drop and this is this is Tetris for the GBA I think it's called Tetris Wells and uh, I know a lot of people I mean I, I don't play Tetris like a pro player like super fast drops you know I'll play it like it, yeah you're below average you know Tetris fan I like the game it's my favorite puzzle game without a doubt DMG rules forever um, but I can see it's really really annoying guys it's it's just the dark and sorry what I'm saying, the annoying, is it's the screen darkness. I'm watching, I'm doing a voiceover in this video and I can hardly bloody see it. It's annoying. Um, but going over to the controls, not not one wrong input. Everything just works. You know, when I tapped up, when I'm moving it down, left, right. I mean, an issue some people had was when they're doing the hard drop or they're, they're bringing the piece down, they're, they're accidentally getting a diagonal. So it's dropping it in the wrong place. Not a single issue for me with Tetris it just it just it just works the d-pad the d-pad works uh, the d-pad works well on tetris guys this is a favorite uh, dreamcast game of mine so this is rival schools 2 known as project justice so i've just gone into training mode here and if you notice as soon as we go into game it's like 55 frames here we go 45 frames a second but it's weird because it just goes up to 60 and it remains on 60 and i played a little bit in the arcade mode as well and it done the same thing it starts off it goes low then all of a sudden it's like hold on let me let me work properly and it kind of works okay and it feels as good as any emulation does of this game so i was very surprised this is a good game like try this out i like to try out some more i'm going to try out some other games as well maybe like power stone i can't remember if you can play power stone on the d-pad or if it's with the analog stick but i have got that on here i didn't try it in this video uh you know i tried to get as much as i can i tried to cram as many games as many fighting games at least as i could 
but yeah this kind of works all right weird how it doesn't start okay but then it start then it kind of works and again on when i'm playing the dreamcast i have no issues with the brightness i can have it as as bright as i want okay guys so that, that brings us to the end of this video um okay so if i had to say is this a device worth buying or not yes i would say buy it if you like fighting games especially if you like capcom fighting games it feels nice playing it with six face buttons it feels like it feels like the arcade layout that we are supposed to have for this it just feels really really good guys like i like it it has its issues um now what you might want to do is wait to see what custom firmware comes out for it because stuff like the brightness does bother me and it will stop me from enjoying it in different places um so i bought it i've got it now i don't regret my purchase but the custom firmware will definitely without a doubt just make this so so much better and that's what i'm really really looking forward to i'll keep an eye on that let me know in the comments below if you want to see more videos on this i don't usually usually do these handheld videos too much i'll stick to my fpga stuff but again six face buttons and a satin style d-pad i had to at least test it out and overall i'm not disappointed i'm glad i bought it um I want to try like RetroArch Online with it because the Wi-Fi not only does it have 2 gigahertz Wi-Fi, it has like 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I still like my analog pocket, but the D-pad on the device isn't, it really isn't that great. Uh, the other Ambernic on the left, again, same style as the analog pocket, even though the D-pad's better than the analog pocket on that. It's just not comfortable to play for long periods of time. So honestly, um, as far as fighting handhelds go or emulation fighting handhelds, this is the best design ever. And hopefully in future with community support and, and you know people making stuff for this, it will get better and better. Uh, so yeah, leave me comments down below. Let me know if you want to see other stuff with this. If you want to see a video with custom firmware working once it's officially released or maybe some kind of guide. But yeah, guys, that's really it for this video, man. Again, not the most comprehensive review, but I wanted to show you guys control and fighting games. And, and hopefully I've done a good job doing that. So if you enjoyed it, a subscription and a like is super duper appreciated. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other, guys. This is Pixel Cherry Ninja out.